Hello, my astrology friends. This is Lada from astrolada.com. And today I have here with me Master Astrologer Trifon Nikolov, who will be talking to us about fixed stars. Hello, Trifon. Hello, Lada. Hello, everybody. So we decided today to uh, give you some additional information about uh, um, the topic of the, of the fixed stars. And this to serve as an example, uh, also for the upcoming uh, uh, course about fixed stars. And to be honest, once I learned from you fixed stars according to the ancient text uh, with the first course that you did, but you covered only 30, to be honest, like 70% to 60% of my readings are focused on the fixed stars and have been focused and I discover specifics about the life of a person through the fixed stars, which is incredible, rather than going to complicated uh, astrological aspects and whatnot. Sometimes you can see everything just by the fixed stars. That's why I believe every astrologer should know at least the important ones but you're going to cover in the two-day workshop on the 10th and 11th i think of june uh all hundred yes. stars according to ancient babylonian and uh, and according to your own observations with a hundred examples so i'm very excited for you to give us a few examples plus if anyone would like a personal reading with trifon he has a special promotional reading at only 159 dollars down from 250 on the fixed stars in your zodiac it's one hour live and recorded reading with him uh, it's almost a hundred percent on almost hundred dollars down if you're interested to have this personal reading with Trifun that's promotional for the next two weeks but I'm looking forward to hear what you're going to tell us about the fixed stars now okay so of course uh, when we have uh depending on the system, like seven planets or ten planets in the chart, uh, but the stars are innumerable. And uh, the ones that are discussed by the ancient astrologers and uh, by more, more modern astrologers, in time there are, of course, many and many stars, hundreds of them. And uh, when we have like exact uh, working knowledge about them, this really adds to a uh, extreme detail sometimes about uh, anyone's uh, horoscope yeah this this makes very often the difference and let's remember also that the stars are nothing else but they are like the anatomy of the sky the anatomy uh -huh. yes. well, so, what would you say about people who are places. nowadays i especially see the younger generations they're adding like 500 different asteroids and stuff what what but they're not visible in the sky like the stars they've been discovered by telescopes but you cannot see those asteroids well about the asteroids i i, I can say this is something uh, definitely secondary compared to the fixed stars mm -hmm. this is uh, at least what i can say because it like seems that astrologers and people who are interested in astrology are forgetting forgetting that Astrology is a science of light. That's why in India it's called Jutish, which means this uh, science of light. And uh, they forget that everything is based on the stars. Right? To be able and, to uh, see the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, including uh, the science of light is also related to how bright are the planets, which uh, adds to their significance or takes from it. Mm -hmm. uh, so asteroids, I can say, only if you have knowledge about the planets and the stars, then maybe you can go, like, for something additional to know about some asteroids. But I don't think you ever need it, actually. Yeah, apparently there is, is an asteroid called Lada, and it's conjunct my ascendant. So I was like, well, <laughs> there's some funny <laughs> synchronicities there. But anyway, I want to know about the fixed stars because... The, the thing that works the most over the last 20 right. years that I've been doing astrology is fixed stars. It's like, wow. <laughs> thanks to I discovered them thanks to you and not the fixed stars, like how they're written now by, you know, but according to Hermes Trismegistus that were recently translated, of course, by uh, uh, 
astrologers that they're discovering more about what the ancients are about the fixed stars. There, there are several translations of texts about uh, the fixed stars. Uh, and of course, however, uh, whatever is uh, mentioned there in the text also needs uh, some specific research and additional understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's why people can also, of course, use those tension texts, but uh, very often they will not uh, know how exactly to use this knowledge. Sometimes, however, it can be like very literal. Sometimes uh, the true meaning of a star will be uh, traced only by a legend related to this star or um, uh, some specific position. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many details. Um, because the stars, they can be looked uh, uh, upon in the chart in different ways. Depends where they are standing. So it's one thing to be in conjunction with the midheaven, but another thing, if it is in conjunction with the seventh house cusp, for instance. And if it, if a star is in conjunction with the fourth house cusp, it will show its influence later in life because the fourth house signifies later years. Ooh, for I instance. have our goal there, <laughs> right on the fourth house cusp. <laughs> wow, okay. Well... At least, at least you will be rich at least you will be rich right uh, rich because i'll go with the star of wealth oh, okay but it's also the star of death and <laughs> and traumas and scary uh, you know this this uh that is uh you know the only thing that is inevitable for everybody okay yeah true yeah yeah but well what i'll go um yeah, our goal is more unstable, by the way, in a way that uh, she has a twin that circles around the star and makes her blink. Mm. And this sort of uh, creates a, some instability in her uh, shining, right? Because she blinks each three days. And it's a warning for certain things, uh, and you know about those things, but uh, it's a warning that about the finances, such people, they tend to be to become wealthy, but also there is one moment when they are in danger to lose almost everything. So this is maybe what you have to do, like to be more like wise financially <laughs> with this position. Like, right, this is this is an advice that I give to everybody, everyone who have our goal in an important position. And I have seen that this is uh, really the truth for people. But today we will make another example, by the way. Okay. Other examples, not uh, with you, right? Okay. This is yeah, yeah. Accident. I mentioned it for you. So uh, I will focus on three stars to give them as an example, not with the full meanings that they will be there in the course about the fixed stars, but just to give the examples, the connection with the texts, and uh, how it really relates to uh, to what happens in someone's horoscope. So let's begin maybe with whom uh, I have uh, a favorite, uh, one of my favorite people I can say, uh, from teenage times. And it's a favorite uh, to many young men and people in general, especially those of my age, I guess. So let's show it, let's show it. Hmm. Maybe I would just uh, show him right now. So people, you will see him now. Oh, <laughs> Common or uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and this is uh, intentionally what I'm showing. <laughs> Uh, because he's uh, shown here as a king, right? He's shown as a king. And he was uh, sort of a king because he became a governor of yeah. California, what? if you remember, yeah. for yeah. two times, two times, like for eight years. And the uh, Californator, right, the Terminator, and so on, uh, he was a uh, famous... Uh, in bodybuilding, also the best uh, in bodybuilding in his time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's very famous, very successful, right? So 
and what is happening with him. So you can see him now, but uh, I will also share his uh, horoscope. So just a moment to find him. So fast. Okay, here he is. Let's share. Okay. So this is his sidereal astrology chart. So people, you will see he has a rising sign Gemini. Mm -hmm. Namely, the ascendant degree is 25 degrees Gemini. And in the ancient texts, uh, this is, uh, the, and of course, not only in the texts, but also in reality, right? Uh, this is the position of a certain fixed star in the sign of Gemini. In Gemini, we have two main stars, Pollux and Castor. Yeah. Pollux and Castor. And this star here is called Castor. So these are the, the male twins in Gemini, which in the ancient legends, they are like the best fighters, the best in sports. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but this is one thing. This is one thing. Uh, Castor is said to be of the nature of Mercury and Jupiter, which is very important here. Because Hermes, Trismegistus, and the ancients, they are saying that if a star is in, is in a conjunction with a planet that corresponds to her nature, then it is 10 times stronger in its expression. Mercury. And especially, yes, and especially if this star is on the ascendant or on the mid heaven. So in his case, it is exactly on the ascendant, but there you have also Mercury, one degree behind. Mercury in Gemini is also in conjunction. So you remember the star is of the nature of Mercury and Jupiter. But it's not only this, but also Jupiter is making exact trine to mm -hmm. Mercury and very close to the ascendant, also spectrum. So we have the two planets of the nature of the star being related with exact aspect to the star and in the most powerful place in the horoscope. At least one of the most powerful, because there is like a dispute whether it's the ascendant or the mid heaven. So and so we see that this star is there, right? And uh, now, uh, what we can do is just to look at the ancient text about this star. Mm -hmm. So listen how it uh, begins. Ancient text about this star. It says that whoever has this star will look majestic. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, sh I showed you how majestic he looked. Right? <laughs> so, so uh, and he really does something in real, in real life, right? With this, all the masters and so on. And, uh, and also the ancient text is continuing. He will be blessed. He really looks like blessed because uh, he, whatever he touches in his life, is successful in everything, mm -hmm. literally, right? So he will be a king, the ancient text is stating. He became a governor of California, right? The king of a pretty big state, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the ancient text is saying he will love the noble actions, noble things, and uh, he will love God, okay? I can relate this to him. He looks like this. And the ancient text is stating he will achieve glory fast. And this mm -hmm. is true. He, he became a champion at a very early age. He yeah. was famous already very young. Mm -hmm. Remember that this star is uh, magnified by the influence of Mercury and Jupiter, the planets yeah. of the same nature. And so it's like 10, 20 times stronger than usual case. Then, right? So if someone was born there without Mercury and Jupiter trying to probably on a smaller level have those things not, not on the level of Arno, of course okay. not on the level of Arno. <laughs> it has to have this combination like jupiter or mercury also present very close right okay. with something bigger in this case uh it is said also he will be remembered a long time about this we can be sure and uh, he will love the people in his kingdom 
right? Yeah. You know them, I think. He's very active uh, online, showing uh, his constant connection with people. Mm. So uh, this is one example. One example. Wow. Uh, let's comment also about something else. Uh, what I mean. So next example we'll share again. But uh, in astrology, we have something that is called uh, the knowledge about the, the sect. Knowledge mm -hmm. about the sect. And by sect, yeah. it is uh, we, uh, the astrologers mean the, the power of planets uh, in the daytime and in the nighttime. Certain planets are stronger in daytime. Other planets are stronger in nighttime. And the opposite, the, the ones who are strong in the nighttime, for those who are born in the day, they're weaker, somehow like weaker or more negative expression. And this is important in astrology. Let's just say it's extremely important, actually. It's decisive in many ways. And this will play uh, in the next example, in the next example, which is not so like positive one. And uh, which is this new example? So I'm talking about a certain person, which is famous, of course. First, I'll show him. Uh, let's see if I can do it. This is the person that I'm talking about. <laughs> Escobar. <laughs> so, some of you will recognize him. This is the uh, the famous leader of uh, a narco cartel, uh, Pablo Escobar. A very, very bad guy. Very bad guy. No matter his, no matter his smiling here. Uh, so. But the this people loved him. <laughs> His... some, some of them, some of them. I am tending to to disagree about that in a sense that some of the people around him, he, uh, they loved him because he was uh, capable to do some charity. Mm -hmm. But he killed a lot of people, obviously. So there's a lot of cruelty there. Yes, and his charity also was mixed with uh, manipulation. Uh, but anyway, so now let's uh, show his chart. Here is his astrological chart. Hmm. So we will be talking now about the main star of the constellation Scorpio. Antares. This is very interesting. Yes, the main star is called Antares. Yes, sir. Or Antares, right? So, and uh, you know, if you look at his chart with uh, tropical Western astrology, he will be Sagittarius, which does not sound exactly about his life, but this is a complex question. Anyway, he really corresponds to, to Scorpio, to the main star of Scorpio, because the sun in his chart is in conjunction with the star Antares. The star Antares is uh, posited on the 14th degree and 59 minutes, almost on the 15th degree uh, in Scorpio, right in the middle of Scorpio, in other words. And he has this sun 15 degrees and 8 minutes. This is to say like only 9 minutes after the exact position of the star. So it's an exact conjunction between the sun of this uh, criminal leader and the main star of Scorpio, Antares. So it's an exact conjunction. And, so, and the ancients are saying that the influence of this star will be very strong if it is with the sun and on the midheaven. Oh, so he has it. He has it <laughs> you've amplified. got them both. 
<laughs> he has this. The sun is exactly on the midheaven. The star is also there. Uh, oh, everything is in conjunction. There are many other things involved. And uh, this star is of the nature of Jupiter and Mars. Jupiter and Mars. And uh, it's considered by the ancients to be one of the royal stars, showing someone who have great height of power. Great. Potentially a, a leader, leader. Especially yeah. Antares is related to military leadership. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Yes, he was involved with military organizations who served uh, uh, to him and his goals. And of course, the cartel is something like this. And uh, he, however, why he is a criminal? Why this star is not giving to general, for instance, in the army? This is where the knowledge about the sect is coming and how we can discern about uh, what the star will do, right? So because Mars is a night planet, and Mars corresponds to the nature of the star, partly because it's nature of Mars and Jupiter, to remind you. Uh, and if you look at his chart, you will see that Mars is in Leo in conjunction with Saturn, exact conjunction with Saturn. Mars also rules the sun, so let's say his soul and his power that is uh, given by the star Antares are corrupted by this uh, very heavy conjunction between Saturn and Mars. And more so they are in the seventh house, which is related to disturbing the peace and violence. Especially when Mars is there, this is what the ancient text was saying. Was saying. And so he has it here. He has this combination. The other planet of the nature of Antares is Jupiter. And Jupiter is uh, in Capricorn, which is a sign of debilitation. Mm. You know, Jupiter is a planet of morality and honesty. And uh, if a, if uh, someone who has the star Antares will be a noble warrior of some kind, he will need to have also strong Jupiter. And when Jupiter is not strong, but is actually weak, as in the case of uh, this criminal leader, then uh, what happens is that he does not have uh, morality. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And the influence of the star becomes really just the power to do whatever he likes, which uh -huh. uh, is what exactly happened. Yeah. Uh, the ancient text about the star is saying the following, so you'll see how it corresponds. The what? It's, it, well, the ancient text, the ancient the text what? about the star is saying that he will command soldiers. Yes. That he will be famous in faraway countries. That he will be great in his actions. All those things are true. And that he will die a bad death. Oof. Bad death. Wow. Which happened? He was killed. Yes. Wow. He was killed. Right. So... And all those things are confirmed about him. Amazing. So as you can see, uh, these examples are really like striking. And of course, these are examples about men, but I uh, chose the last final example to be not about men, right? Because in this world, we have also a lot of women, right? Mm. And many of them are, are, are watching so the video. So, and I'm intending in the in the seminar to give like equal number of examples uh, of men and women for Ooh, the stars. That one, <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, because we have like uh, a little bit like inequality. Uh. This, so I think this will be more interesting. And so the. Uh, as you can see, it's really it's really interesting. But uh, uh, what is the next example? So the next example, let's show first person. It's a very famous woman. 
You don't always have to give examples of famous people, though. You can give examples of friends, and <laughs> they're even more interesting. Than real people. Yes, we, we can we can give example of friends, of course, but uh, these are not like people who people, the others will know. Mm. So, and that's why. Yeah. That's why I'm uh, giving someone who is like this. But I will give also examples just that are not known to the public, but just interesting. Yes. Okay. So, okay, let's... And by the way, to sure. say there's still the early bird option, if you come and join us for those Saturday and Sunday when he's doing the seminar uh, online on a webinar, it's a 40% discount if you still get it. After that, the price goes up. Anyway, just saying, I'll put the link below in the description for anyone interested to learn about the 100 fixed stars. Fixed and of course, they'll come with the degrees. Uh, Trifon will be telling the degree in sidereal. I'll be telling you the degree in tropical straight away. So if you're used to tropical zodiac, you can check there. Okay, and here comes the female example here. Ah, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, this is Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson, famous actress. So, uh, okay, see, look at her. She, she is like uh, very charming, very intense, very attractive, right? It has this special vibe of sexuality that she's very popular uh, because of this. Uh, and even though she's not like uh, having like model proportions and so on, she's extremely, extremely attractive. Mm -hmm. Let's just notice this, that she's famous, that she's in this specific way attractive. Uh, and let's, uh, let's also show her chart. All right, this is her chart. You'll see again a lot of Scorpio here, but mm -hmm. not the star Antares. It is not on this channel. So there are other things in this chart, a lot of them. But here I will focus on one specific star as an example. Please notice the ruler of the ascendant, Mars in Capricorn. It is an exalted planet. Mm. She leads exalted life, right? But uh, the ruler of the ascendant. But uh, there is a star in conjunction with Mars. Mm -hmm. There is a star in conjunction with the ruler of the ascendant. It's a little different position. However, which is the star? You can see Mars is in Capricorn. In the head of Capricorn, there are a couple of bright stars. Two of them are brighter. And uh, one of them is called Al -Giedi. So Al -Giedi, in English, I think, Al -Giedi. It is called also Giedi Prima. Giedi mm -hmm. Prima. So she is in the horns, the horns of the goat. Oh. <laughs> that is the one. The first half of Capricorn is represented by stars that are fought by the ancients to represent Goat. A goat, goat head, goat's head, and some part of the body of the goat. So there is an entire legend about Capricorn that uh, uh, the ancient god uh, Bacchus or uh, Janus, you can say, yeah. was running from one of the uh, monsters. That there was this like famous war with Typhon. Anyway, he he was hiding and he jumped in the river and. Uh, the part of him above the river was uh, the goat, and the, the part below the surface was uh, like a fish. So mm -hmm. constellation Capricorn is half a goat, half a fish mm -hmm. in, the ancient, in the ancient descriptions, right? So anyway, so this is in the head, in the house, this one. And um, so the ancient texts are saying like there is one ancient author called Manilius who has an entire book about the, the heavens, the stars, and uh, he 
is saying that the first half of Capricorn is slave of Venus. Slave of Venus, says. This is a specific expression, and it means that the people who have this, they're very much related to the energy of Venus, to the desires about love, for example. Mm -hmm. right? And of course, it means they can be very attractive. And this star, uh, this special, this star, is uh, said by the ancients to be having the nature of Venus and Mars. Venus and Mars. Mm -hmm. You know, the plants related to love and sexuality. And uh, whoever has uh, those stars in the head of Capricorn, of course, has those energies greatly amplified, very intense. And uh, when the ruler of the Ascendant is with this star in an exact conjunction, of course, this becomes even stronger. The and because it's a Mars star. It's a Mars star, so it makes it 10 times, because it's with Mars, 10 times stronger. Exactly, exactly. That's why I chose this example. Because uh, the ruler of the Ascendant Mars here corresponds to the nature of the star. Uh, and this influence of this star is becoming 10 times stronger. And all this uh, energy related to, to Venus and Mars is greatly amplified. And she has great looks. And mm -hmm. let's not forget Venus is also part of the nature of the star is Venus, which also relates to art. Uh -huh, because yeah. Venus is the planet of art. So she's famous actress. And, uh, and so... Uh, there are many other things that the ancients are saying about uh, this position, but they will be mentioned uh, in the webinar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they are too interesting to be mentioned here. The so, horn. <laughs> the horny horned. <laughs> many, many things, different things. Mm -hmm. I have got uh, my so, pendant there, so I'm just smiling here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but your Senate is close by, not exactly there, right? Oh. <laughs> but anyway, it's really close, really close. You have it, I think, two, three degrees away from this place. But the ancients are saying that the fixed stars, the brightest, uh, the bright stars are having like an orb. This is how far away they can influence, like seven degrees. Okay. Seven degrees. So, so you have. You have influence from this star, that's for sure. And it's really important for you. It is there. Well, and it... uh, so people, these were some short examples. And uh, I will not forget them in the webinar again with some additional maybe about those same stars so that you have some something additional. So and now you have 97 idea. more stars <laughs> to learn about. Right. Great. 97, right. So now we you can see how how the stars are really making the difference in uh, someone's chart. Because they make like special combinations, they have special meanings. And uh, this is the key, the key to, to anyone's horoscope. So and if them. anyone would like also a personal horoscope to have all their fixed stars showed and what their special powers and strength are uh, because like Trifon said everyone has the seven planets somewhere in their horoscope but people how they uh, differ of, is of course how those seven planets are situated but also uh, if there are fixed stars affecting the horoscope people with powerful fixed stars usually are meant for different and interesting things they're beyond our solar system the fixed stars and i think there is this this is what gives special mission to people in some ways when yeah, in ancient astrology the fixed stars were considered to be the highest sphere of the heavens like yeah. um, like the divine the divine influence right mm -hmm. what the heavens are deciding uh, whether the planets not always according to some schools so uh, this is what the heavens is determining, determining for one. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Trifun. I'm so looking forward to this course. The first time in six years, Trifun is making a course, I think. So, <laughs> or almost seven years. So 
very much looking forward to that. Whoever wants to join us, uh, we're a nice, sizable group already. Or whoever, if you don't want to learn that, you can have a personal reading with Trifon that is hugely discounted from $250 to $159 for one hour where he'll talk about your personal fixed stars uh, directly with you. So thank you so much again, Trifon. Thank you for joining thank me. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lala. And I'll see you very soon again with world predictions that you have for us. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Totally, totally. <laughs> okay. Bye.